Good morning, folks. Most have heard about the train crash disaster in Canada. Here's a before and after shot at nighttime for comparison. Flooding records are dwarfing heat and cold records, which themselves aren't as spread as global warming propaganda would have you believe. But those of us in the Western world are seeing nothing like this. Worst of the worst weather seems to be hitting the developing world. Coming to the USGS, no major quaking yesterday, but Chile and the Pacific Rise were active, along with the area just north of New Zealand. Top RSOE story today is a spike in cesium in the groundwater below and around the Fukushima catastrophe. Salt Lake in the West Pacific, now a major typhoon and may nudge super typhoon status today. Models are bringing it further and further south. Similar storm conditions in the Atlantic, just much weaker. Chantal expected to come up and dive west into the U.S. coastline once it makes its way north of the Caribbean. There is a huge high pressure cell blocking the entire Atlantic. And as always, spinning clockwise in the north, the southern edge is driving west. Both those factors scream that a left turn is coming, and residents of the coastline better be ready. Imagine five dudes in an office looking out the window, baffled at the amount of rain coming down. That was me and my co-workers yesterday, and I'd better be ready for more tonight. There's that spin clockwise. Must be another high pushing outward. And it looks like the counterclockwise low sucking in is just north of the border. This is quite the new normal pattern. Higher highs, lower lows, and a strong southward swinging convergence tail that forces equilibrium between air masses that have nothing in common. I believe tonight we could even see tornado outbreaks, so please, be watchful. Solar wind, we were wondering if the coronal hole stream missed us as we waited for the CME impact. You see simultaneous spikes in the speed and density, that's the yellow and the orange, indicating a CME impact and that the coronal hole stream has likely missed Earth. Magnetometers took the first shot on the jaw like what, that's all you got? But repeated smaller proton density fluctuations cut at the electrons after midnight UTC and a minor geomagnetic storm is in progress. Interestingly, the tech maps that were out when we wanted to check for anomalies near certain occurrences are now back on, but the archives are still missing the ones we wanted. Solar flaring, at least it's constant, constantly weak for this solar maximum. Sunspot Group got about four makeovers as it crossed so far, and I see little more than umbral decay and weakening magnetic interaction. These big decaying relics will usually pop one or two as they decay and leave the disk, but I do believe our chances for major flaring are fading with the active regions. Not that you need active regions to have fun on the sun. Yesterday's filament highlighted at the end of the video did indeed pop. The center disk eruption would almost certainly be an Earth-directed CME, but hey, we like to check the data. First, NASA judges this to be a small to moderate eruption and headed right at Earth. Earth being the little yellow dot here, so you can indeed see an impact is expected. In Space Weather 102 last night, we saw the stereo confirming ejecta had left our star. Today we look for halo eruptions on Soho, Lasco. That's material ejected in all directions. It's faint, but undoubtedly a halo eruption. Should get to Earth about the time those red mark coronal holes on the left swing in to face Earth from the umbral opening. You can probably see their darkness intruding over the left side of the AIA-211. Got shots of our star to close? Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.